Okay, hello, welcome. This is part two of our Blooming Spiral Poncho. This is one of my finished ones. Um, at this point, I am, let me find my, my motifs here, sorry. I have made all eight, and we are going to now arrange them as so and assemble them together, attach them together, I should say. And I wanted to show you, I had such concerns about the yarn. Um, I actually wound up finding my scraps from this last poncho I made. I made it a two-tone one, and the hem, I have to pull the hem up here. The hem is the same color as the collar, sort of a like a caramel and a, and a cream coffee. So, unfortunately, this yarn does not exist. It has been completely discontinued, but I wanted to show you the difference in size. So I will bring you down for this. You're gonna bounce around a little bit because I have budget equipment. Ooh, bouncy, okay. <laughs> okay, this is the yarn I recommended. I also was going through my stash and found this yarn here, cotton gold, might even be a better fit. So if you already bought your yarn, um, I think it's still gonna be okay. But if you have decided to watch these videos in full before you decide if you wanna make it, maybe even, we're gonna look at the size comparison of even this. I only had one ball of this. So that's probably why I completely overlooked it. That and it's black and I didn't want a black poncho. Okay, this is the uh, a scrap of the original, the original yarn I used. Here is the thickness of it on my finger. I won't pull it tight, that way it's easier to see. And here is the yarn that I had recommended. It's pretty darn similar. It's just a little bit thinner. just a little bit thinner, not by much. That's why I said if you need it to be more of an extra large size, just go up to a four millimeter hook. And that is the silky effect one that I recommended. Now let's look at, I am literally gonna look at this with you for the first time because as you can see, this ball of yarn is unused. So I don't know if this is going to compare Let's see here. Uh-oh, we're gonna get some yarn barf. Yep. All right, I'm just gonna pull out a little bit. Now let's see if this compares. Actually, this is quite a bit bigger. I think you can see that. It's a bit bigger. Quite a bit bigger. It feels bigger too. There's a clear ledge difference. Like you like a like if you're like on a ledge, it clearly drops down from black to tan. So maybe if you want to make an extra large and you do want cotton instead of this acrylic and you don't, you can, you can probably get this and still use the 3.75 hook, I'm gonna guess. But that's just a guess. I, I have never tried using this yarn for it so I don't wanna say for sure. I just got excited when I found this and I thought, ooh, maybe that's the same, or maybe it's the same as the original yarn. It is not, it is quite a bit thicker. Okay, also I wanted to show you, since this isn't available, and we used this a little bit thinner, let's look at the comparison here, which I did this already before I even made this uh, video, so it's not like I went into this blind. I wanted you to see why I felt comfortable recommending, let me go a little higher so you can see that full diamond. I wanted you to see why I felt comfortable recommending this. Now, this has been worn and washed. It is relaxed, also it's cotton, so it's just a little bit more worn in and stretched out. This has never been worn, it is brand new, but let's look at the size comparison. Now obviously, Wearing it, it's kind of heavy. Wearing it is going to stretch it out a bit. 
So here is the size comparison of the used stretched out one and the unused unstretched out one. It, it is a little bit smaller, but that's why I said if you need to go up higher than a, a large, just bump your crochet hook up to a four millimeter and that should do it. I did make one of these in a four millimeter and it came out to almost the same size. Um, but what I noticed, see I'm a size 14, US 14, and this one here is actually a little bit big on me. Um, I should, I'm gonna go ahead and insert a picture in, of me wearing my original one that is just all one color. These ones here are actually a little bit bigger on me, so I'm kind of excited about it. This one's, I think this one's actually gonna fit, I wear a size large. I think this one's actually gonna fit me a bit better than this one does. This one comes down a bit low and it, it eats up a lot of my arm space. And I purposely had to go back and tighten up the neck a little bit because the shoulders were too, too big. So this might be a happy accident that that yarn has been discontinued. I actually think this is gonna be a better fit for small, medium, and large wearers. And if you bump up to a four millimeter, this is what you'll get and it'll be a better fit for you. All right, let's arrange these to the way we're going to sew them. Also, I wanted to show you in this one that's already finished, how we're going to attach these. It's a very classic way of attaching granny square. We're going to single crochet the seam together. Gives it a little bit of definition and texture. Okay. Your middle and your back center are going to be diamond. All the rest are going to be straight like this, including what comes over the shoulder, still gonna be straight, just like this. Straight across, just like that. So what I would recommend is shape it like this and go ahead and stitch these two together, call it done. And I'm gonna do this with you. And then go ahead and repeat that again. Shape your other six, just like this. Now you have your front and back stitched together. All you have left to do is attach one more over here, one more over here. Bring this around like this and attach those together. So I'm gonna do all this with you, but to start off with, we're going to do this sort of formation, okay? You're going to need, oh, where's my hook? The same hook, your 3.75 millimeter. Okay, so go ahead and kind of arrange your squares a little bit, get find a comfortable position. I usually do this, I'm doing this at my dinner table, I usually do this on the couch with this very huge like Time Life Magazine book on my lap because <laughs> I'm a couch bum. Okay, go ahead and get yourself comfortable, get yourself arranged and then meet me back here. Okay, let's go ahead and get started on assembling the squares. So this is how it's going to wind up looking. We're gonna move this one aside for now. Twist this up this way. We're going to ignore the chain three space and we're going to work in the front loop only of that double crochet and what I call the back loop only of the other motifs double crochet. It is the furthest away stitch. See, you have your two stitches. We're working on this outer stitch. So you'll just go in like that. Let me get my yarn. We have a long tail. Come on, you. Oh, I had my hook backwards. Okay, go in. Drop that tail down. Chain one and go right back into those same loops and work your first 
single crochet. In the next loops over, you're going to again find your front loop. Nope, don't pull through, Karina. You're going to find your front loop and your back loop and work a single crochet. Front loop, back loop, single crochet. Now all three of those double crochets are joined. Now we're going to move on to the half double crochets. We're going to find our front loop. Sometimes they're tiny and hidden. Back loop, single crochet. Front loop, back loop, single crochet. Front loop, back loop, single crochet. When I get a few more in, I'll show you what the back should look like. Front, back, single, front, back, single, front, back, single. Sounds like I'm getting ready to sing a song here. <laughs> okay, front, back, single front, back, single. Let's look at the back. This is how it should be looking in the back. Just like this. A lot of good stretch in there. That's how it should be looking. Let's carry on. Front, back, single, front, back, single. I'll show you what we do when we get to our chain, our chain, in our chain one, but our single crochet is going to be worked no different. Front, back, single, front, yeah, back, and single. Now I'm at my single crochets, front back and single all the way across just like this oops so one thing about thin yarn it likes to jump around especially this silkier stuff I'm telling you you're gonna love the way it feels though it's so worth it it's like silky butter I absolutely love it I sort of accidentally stumbled upon it on Amazon and I thought for the price, I am going to have to try these out. Okay, so I'm gonna leave you here. Keep working your single crochets all the way to the end. And when you get to the end, just tie off after you've worked your last single crochet in that last double crochet. Ignore the chain three spaces. Okay, and then you will have it like this. Well, it'll be like this. Wait. Turn it like this, and then you're gonna add your other square. How you're gonna do that is just turn this to the top like that. Turn that around like that, and go ahead and add that to the bottom. Attach your yarn and just start working. So come back. Oh, and go ahead and do this for your back V as well. So that is your homework, is to go ahead and make your front V and your back V. When you're done making both of those, come back to the video and we're gonna attach our arm, our shoulder motifs, and close this whole thing off. And then the next step will be, we're gonna start working our collar, okay? We'll see you in a little bit. Okay, welcome back, now that we are done sewing our two V's together, front and back, and I have both of mine here. We are ready to put on our uh, shoulder area motifs. I have both of those here. Wouldn't this kind of make a cute, I mean, kind of like a cute little, maybe a couch throw? I don't, I'm just saying things. Okay, on with the job. Okay, first things first, let's go ahead and add this one, just like that. Whenever you're done adding that one exactly the same way we started, where you are going to skip your chain spaces and you're going to work in your front loop only, 
oops, back loop only, and work a single crochet. Okay. Then you're going to attach this one. Now, by nature, you're going to want to like attach it like this. That would be wrong. We come around and we attach it like this to where it's just a straight line of three motifs like that. Then we're going to come around with this one and attach it like that. So, all right, let's just get started. Let's go ahead <clears throat> and attach this first one here. Okay, now I have finished putting all of my motifs on this front side. I have one, two, three, four, and then the one shaped like a diamond right in the middle. That's what you should have too. And I still have this one that is just three. We're going to bring it all together now. It's gonna be really hard for me to get this in my camera. Oops, nope, nope, that, I'm zoomed out as far as I can go. Okay, we'll make it work. Just know this is the bottom of the V here. Here is your other V, right? So what you're gonna do is twist your V like this and then add it on. That way there are no diamonds on the shoulder part. The shoulder part should just be your three or yeah, three uh, middle motifs. So make it look like that. Um, I'll try to show you again. It's really hard because I can't get the whole thing on camera. So we have our V. We're gonna go up this way. We're gonna go ahead and attach this side first so you can see it. We take our small V here and we spin it like this to where it's like a little L and attach it. Okay, I hope that made sense. I hope that made sense because there's no way I can fit the whole thing in my camera. I am so sorry. Let me see if there isn't something else I can do to make it easier to see what I am trying to say. I'm just gonna go. Okay, hopefully now you can see what it is I am trying to describe here. Here is our large V. One, two, three, four attached. Here is our small V. Spin the small V to where it's like an L and attach it like that, okay? Come back once you've done this and then we're gonna bring this side around and attach it like that so that it sort of forms almost a circle because we don't want any diamonds on the shoulder motifs. Okay, so for now, let me see here. For now, attach it like this. Okay? Okay, I have attached everything as I showed in the last clip. I have my three areas here. This middle one is gonna go right over our shoulder. Here I have the back V, and then I have the front V. Now, how we're gonna bring this together, you see our V points. I guess I'm gonna have to probably take my phone off again. Okay, you can see our V points. Bring this one like this, and bring this one, oops, like this and it should look like that, okay? So again, I'll show you. You have your V points, your three motifs in the middle. Bring this up and in, and bring this, I'm sorry, bring this around and attach, just like that. Okay, trust me, it's gonna work out.
Okay, now that we are done attaching all the way around, we have our front point and our back points. You'll spin it this way, open it up, and there you go. See there? And that's what we want our shoulders to be, is straight like that, no diamonds, no diamonds. And so there you go. That's how it should be looking at this point. Isn't that nice? Okay, let's go ahead and get started on the collar. Once we're done with the collar, we begin the long portion of working the body. Then we will work the hem finally, and then you will have your beautiful poncho that everybody will be like, girl, where'd you get that? I made it. <laughs> okay, let's get started on the collar. Okay, now we are ready to go ahead and start the collar area. You can see I have it folded. Okay, this is gonna be really, really simple. And I, I just have to say, the reason the background looks so different here is because I had the collar done, completely done, and I was editing it for the video, for the tutorial, and I noticed I am missing how to start the collar. I somehow deleted that whole section of footage. I can't find it on my phone. I can't find it on my computer. I can't find it in the junk drawer, in the refrigerator, in the bathroom. It's gone. So I had to unravel my entire collar to start this all over again. And when I say unravel, I mean, we're talking bam of work. <laughs> All the footage that you're gonna see after this video that I made yesterday is everything I just undid. Well, yeah. But it's fine, it's fine. It's not even that big of a deal. Okay, you can see here, we are at our starting front diamond. See how it's the V? I know it's, let's see if I can raise this up a bit. There, okay, that's how we're starting. Out. I put my I put my camera on my on my work. Okay. You know in the motif where we have the corner and we uh, start we made our three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. This is where we're gonna start. This here is the top of our point of our diamond. We're not gonna work that. We're gonna come over here see if I get my hands out of the way I can show you we're not gonna start in this area we're starting right here with these three double crochet so pick your first one first of your three double crochet over there attach your yarn pull through and of course I leave myself a very long tail chain one and work a single crochet in that same starting, excuse me, starting double crochet. Now we're gonna work the objective of this round. You don't have to be, you don't have to have your, your be specific and be precise and on point. The main objective is to make sure that we have 29 single crochet across the top of each motif. We're not going to be working in the chains and the joins between the motifs. We're going to work right over the top of those. Our main focus is to make sure that no matter how we achieve it, we get 29 stitches in uh, across the top of each motif. So I'm going to show you how I do it. And it's really easy. So we have one already made one, two, three. Now our three double crochet have three single crochets on top. We're going to skip over this gap area right here. We're going to skip right over. It looks like a stitch. We're going to skip right over it. That's three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, and nine. When you get to nine, you know you need to skip. Go ahead, skip this right here. Looks like a little stitch, skip it. On to 10. Excuse me. 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. When we get to 15, we're gonna stop because we gotta do some more skipping. Um, I kinda wanna skip these two. Again, we're not gonna be precise. It, whatever we have to do to get to 29 stitches is what we're gonna do. I feel like I wanna skip these two, so I'm gonna. So I'm gonna skip these two. You may not need to. You may, your 15th may be here, and all you gotta do is skip that little nubby right there. I'm gonna skip these two, so I'm at 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. When you get to 21, stop. We're gonna skip again. And let's see here. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Skip, 27, 28, 29, yes. So I'm gonna skip these two. See what I did there? I just counted on ahead to make sure that no matter what, my last double crochet is number 29. So I'm gonna skip these two right here. Skip, skip. I'm at 21. So we go 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. When you get to 26, you gotta skip again. I'm only gonna skip one. 20, I'm at 26 now. 27, 28, 29. See, whatever it takes. And the next motif over, I may not need to skip two. I may need to only just skip one. I don't know why it works out that way, but it does. It doesn't even matter because look, look at how nice that looks. It made no difference whether we skipped one or whether we were skipping two. Made no difference. Okay, here's how we move on to the next motif. Spin this over around. And we're gonna skip the two chains, we're gonna skip the whole join section, and we're immediately gonna go into our three double crochet with a single crochet. Tighten up my tension just a little bit. There we go. That's one, two, three, over the three double crochet. We're gonna skip, we're gonna skip this one again right here, skip, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. See, now this one here is gonna be different for me. I know I don't need to skip two. I only need to skip one. I just know that. I've made two of these, so I know. <laughs> I'm gonna skip one and move on. That's 10, 11, oops, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. I know when I get to 15, I need to stop so I can skip. And let's see here. I'm gonna skip one. I may skip two. I'm gonna go ahead and skip these two. 16. 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. I know when I get to 21, I'm stopping because I need to skip, and I'm just gonna skip the one. 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. Now let's look and see what we need to do to get to 29 from here. We're at 26 we just made. 26, 27, 28, 29. So I'm only gonna skip this one right here. I'm gonna skip this last half double crochet. 27, 28, and 29. And I know that I am gonna skip all of this. So let me tighten up my tension. And I'm gonna come, I'm gonna jump over the top of all of this 
into my first of my three double crochet. Oops, my first of my three. I'm gonna jump over all this. Gonna single crochet right here. That's one, two, three, skip, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, skip, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm only gonna skip, uh, you know what, I'm gonna skip these two. I'm gonna skip this little single crochet from the motif and I'm gonna skip this first half double crochet. We go 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21 is where we're gonna stop to skip. And I'm just gonna skip one. Then we got 22, 23, that's more yarn, 24, 25, and 26 is where I stop. I'm gonna skip one. That's gonna give me 27, 28, 29. Okay, I've done the first three motifs with you. I think you've got it. Again, just do this last one here with you. Oh, actually, I'm glad we made it to this point. This is our back, our back diamond, okay? And we have this huge gap, huge scooping gap. We're just gonna keep on working. We're gonna skip right over the top of this huge gap and we're gonna double, or we're gonna single crochet into our first of our three double crochet, just like we've been doing. Oops, I'm gonna need more tightening tension than that. Okay, work a single crochet. That's one, then the next one, two, and the next one, three. And I'll show you how that's supposed to look. Right there. Let's get all this out of the way. Right there is how you want that to look. Again, this is our diamond of the back of our poncho. And we just skipped right over the top of all of this. And we immediately went from single crochet of our last double crochet to single crochet of our first of our three double crochet. Just keep doing that all the way around. Make sure that you always have 29 stitches across the top, okay? And I believe, let me look at my notes really quick right here. We are gonna want 175 total stitches all the way around. That's gonna be 29, pretty much 29 times eight. Okay, meet me whenever you are ready to, when you get back to this area here where we started, our very first single crochet. What you're gonna do is work your last single crochet of your last motif, and again, bring it over. We don't do anything in this big old scoop gap area. Just slip stitch into your starting single crochet, and we'll go from there. Okay, I just finished up my last single crochet over my last double crochet in my last motif. I figured I'd finish this off with you. I'm going to now skip over this huge scoop here and slip stitch into our starting single crochet, just like this. And there you go. This is how it should look, okay? Now on to round two, you're gonna chain four. One, two, three, four. This counts as a double crochet plus chain one. This round is super easy. You're gonna skip your next stitch and work a double crochet. Let me just look at my notes. Yep, double crochet in the next stitch over, and that's the repeat. Skip one, I'm sorry. After you make your double crochet, you're gonna chain one. Then you're gonna skip one and double crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. 
chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. This is the repeat all the way around. Whenever you get to your last stitch, your last double crochet, you're gonna chain one, skip one, and in your third chain up, slip stitch into that to connect, to join, okay? Meet me whenever you get done. Here I am, I've made it back to the beginning and I figure I'd finish this up with you and if everything, if your counts have all worked out right, you should have worked a double crochet, chain one and have one double crochet left to skip and go ahead and slip stitch into your third chain. Okay, and then I will show you how that looks. It should look like that. Now this is another really easy round. Okay, you are going to chain three. One, two, three. And in the next stitch over, the next chain one space over, put a double crochet. Let me just look at my nose really quick. Okay, yes. Just making sure I was on the right track because my writing can be a bit, I mean, if you think the way I give a tutorial is hectic, you gotta see my writing. I'm not gonna let you see my writing. Okay, and we are gonna do, we're gonna put a single crochet in, I'm sorry, no, a double crochet in every double crochet and every single chain space all the way around. So every double crochet and every chain space gets a double crochet. No skips, no chains, just straight double crocheting. Every space and in the top of every double crochet all the way around and meet me whenever you're at the beginning you're gonna put a double crochet, put a double crochet in the chain space, and slip stitch into the top of this chain three here to complete the round. Just like that. I'll see you whenever we are ready for the next round up. Okay, here I am at the end of round three, and uh, I should have been keeping track with you this whole time. We have our first row of single crochet was round one. This kind of bracket row here is round two, and our solid double crochet row is round three. Now we are going to start round four, and I'm telling you, see my background again? I am having all kinds of editing issues. I lost even more footage, so I just am gonna go from here. That way I know I can control, there will be no more lost footage. We're gonna finish round three now with a slip stitch into the top of our chain three here. Just like that. Round four, we're going to repeat round two. Chain four, two, three, and four. We're gonna skip our first double crochet. It doesn't look like a double crochet. It's kind of gnarled, but it's a double crochet. We're gonna skip that and work a double crochet. In the next one over, chain one, skip, and work a double crochet. In the next one over, chain one, skip one, work a double crochet. Chain one, skip one, work a double crochet. All the way around, chain one, skip one, work a double crochet. Meet me right here at the beginning of our round four, where you're going to work a double crochet, chain one, skip one, which is this one, you're gonna skip this one, and in one, two, three, in our third chain, slip stitch. And then we will begin round five. Okay, here I have just finished round four. Now we're going to start round five and I'm gonna work my last stitch of round four with you. I've just worked my last double crochet. I'm going to chain one, skip one, and slip stitch into the third chain of our starting chain four. Now this round, we're gonna do something just slightly different. 
you're gonna chain three. That's gonna count as your first double crochet. On this round, our objective is to reduce, to eliminate three total stitches so that the next round up, the count, the stitch count will be balanced for that. So right off the jump, I'm gonna go ahead and do a double crochet decrease. Now how you can do this any way you want, there's no specific count or order for it. Just at random, here's where I'm starting out. Where am I at? Here we go, here's where I'm starting out. I'm gonna put my first double crochet decrease here. And then maybe you wanna crochet quite a bit and then maybe here you want to go ahead and put your next double crochet decrease and then you know keep working your double crochets all the way around and then maybe here you want to put your third double crochet decrease it can be anywhere you want on here just not all in a row not all on one side but try to branch them out a little bit just as long as you have a total of three double crochet decreases so that we can eliminate a total of three stitches for our next round up so this round is going to be just like this round here where we're going to be putting uh, double crochets in every available uh, space and every available double crochet. So it's a basic repeat of that round with the slight difference of at some point at random put your three double crochet decrease. So here's our first decrease. Going to wrap around and go into the chain one space. Pull up a loop, pull through, and work, pull through once, I should say. Sorry, I'm, I'm having a brain black. Wrap around and go into the very next double crochet over, pull up a loop, pull through once, and then you'll see you'll have three loops on your hook, pull through all three loops. And that gives us a single double crochet right there. And then you're just gonna start working your double crochets like we've been doing. All the way around. And again, at random, work another double crochet decrease. I'm gonna do another, I'm gonna remove it when I'm done, but I'm gonna show you how to do a double crochet decrease one more time, because I think that first one was a bit jumbled. I, Words are hard today for some reason. Okay, you're gonna wrap around and go into your chain one space, pull up a loop, and pull through once. Wrap around, go into your next double crochet over, pull up a loop, pull through once, wrap around and pull through all three loops. And that just turned double crochet two double crochets of these two stitches here. Let me get my hook out of the way. We just reduced this stitch and this stitch into one and it just came apart. But I was gonna take it apart anyway. So do that all the way around and meet me at the beginning. Whenever you are done with this round, you will work your double crochet, double crochet, slip stitch into the top of this chain three here. Okay, now I am at the end of round five. We're gonna start round six, and I'm gonna go ahead and finish round five with you. I'm going to work my last double crochet, and slip stitch into the top of this chain three here. There we go. With round six, you're going to chain one, work a double crochet in the same stitch, chain four, one, two, three, four, count four stitches, one, two, three, four, skip those, and work a single crochet in your fifth stitch over, just like this. There we go. This is how it should look, where you have one, two, three, four, double crochet skipped, okay? And we're gonna do this all the way around, creating these loops. You're gonna chain four, one, two, three, four, skip four, one, two, three, four, and in the fifth, 
work a single crochet. Chain four, one, two, three, four. Skip four, one, two, three, four. And in the fifth, work a single crochet. Just do that all the way around. And you should end, let's see here, one, two, three, four. You should end where your last single crochet should be five stitches over. You chain four, you skip these four, one, two, three, four. And then you're gonna slip stitch into your starting single crochet there. Okay, meet me when you get back to here. Here we are at the end of round six. I'm gonna go ahead and finish it with you. I've worked my last single crochet. Now I'm gonna work, uh, make four chains. One, two, three, four. And I'm gonna slip stitch into my starting single crochet. Slip stitch. Now, how we work round seven, our last round, here we go. Boop, round seven. Do not chain one at this point. Instead, we're going to slip stitch again into our chain four space. Now we chain one and we proceed to put five single crochet in this chain four space. One, two, three, four, and five. And we don't work anything in the single crochets. We immediately start working five single crochet again. This is the repeat all the way around. Three, four, and five. Again, we just jump right over the single crochet and immediately start working five single crochet. Two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, five. All the way around. When you get to the end, work your last five single crochet in the chain four space and slip stitch into your starting single crochet. Tie off, cut, we're done with the collar. We will start with the body. Meet me back here whenever you're ready. Okay, welcome back. Now we have completed our collar. So we're gonna spin it around and actually I'm gonna flip it over because I wanna start my, the body of my, my poncho where I tied off for the collar. You can see I haven't weaved in my end yet. So we're gonna be working in the point where it's shaped like a diamond, our little point. We're gonna be working in this chain three space. Now much like how we did the collar, where we needed exactly 29 stitches across. This time we need exactly 31 stitches across. We'll be adding two more stitches. How I've worked that out is when we did the collar, after we did our three over the three double crochet, we stopped and skipped. And we skipped on the last one too. We're not gonna skip those. And that will give us our extra two uh, half double crochets. This this whole round here is going to be worked in half double crochets. So let's get started. Go ahead and join your yarn to the chain three space right here. Oops, sorry. Bumped you guys. Going to chain two, and that's going to count as our first half double crochet. Then we're gonna work another half double crochet. This is the start of our first corner, or our first point, I should say. Then we're gonna chain two, one, two, and work two more half double crochet all in the same corner. One, two, I keep saying corner, it's more like a point. So now what we have is our two, half double crochet, chain two, and two half double crochet all in the same point area of the diamond. Okay, and I'm losing my work. It's slipping right off the edge of the table. All right. 
Now we're going to start making our 31 half double crochet across each motif. And <clears throat> sometimes whenever we're doing, we're making our half double crochets in the corner area and the point area, we could sometimes hide this first half double or double crochet here. All you gotta do is just pull it to the side a little bit and, and it'll make itself available. And we're gonna start in that one. One, two, three, not skipping at all. I'm gonna work four in that little gap. Five, six, oops. Six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. At 10, I'm gonna stop and skip this one right here and work 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and I'm gonna stop at 15. I'm gonna skip these two stitches right here. This last half double crochet and the single crochet from the motif, I'm gonna skip those two and work 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. At 22, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna skip this one right here. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Now at 27, I'm gonna go ahead and count ahead of time and make sure I have enough. So I'm at 27 now. I just did 27, 28, 29, 30, and 31. Perfect. 27, 28, 29, 30, and my last double crochet of the motif is number 31. That's perfect. Now, just like before, we're gonna skip these chain spaces and we're gonna skip the join, and we're gonna start all over again on the next motif over with half double crochets, starting in these three double crochets here. One, two, and three. Okay, this is what you're gonna do all the way around. And it doesn't matter if you do it exactly the way I do, just so as long as you make sure that you have exactly 31 half double crochet from corner to corner. And how you're gonna work, how you're gonna work your next point when you get to it is you're gonna put, you're gonna work your 31st half double crochet right here in this motif. Then you're immediately, without any chains or anything, you're gonna work two half double crochet in this corner, chain two, two more half double crochet, all in the same corner. Two, double, two half double crochet, chain two, two half double crochet, then immediately start on your next round or right next row of 31 half double crochet across. When you're all done with that, meet with me at the very beginning where you are going to work your last half double crochet here and then you're just simply gonna slip stitch into your, into your starting chain two. And we will go from there onto round two. Okay, now that I have finished round one of the body of our poncho, we're ready to start round two. I'm going to end my round with you. I've worked my last half double crochet, which did count to 31. Now I'm going to slip stitch into my starting chain two. Okay, and we're going to slip stitch in the next half double crochet over. I know it looks a little funky on mine because I included my tail in it and so it made it all kind of bulky and weird. 
We're going to slip stitch into the chain two space and chain three for our first double crochet. Then work another double crochet, chain two, one, two, and work two more double crochet. From here on out, we'll be working double crochets until we get to our bottom hem. <clears throat> now you want to chain one, skip your first half double crochet, and let's see why does that look weird? Oh, because it's mushed together. Okay, skip your first half double crochet and work a double crochet. Chain one. Oops, get this. I left my left my yarn all wrapped up. Okay. Sorry, I know I'm always a mess. Okay, we just skipped one from our corner. We chained one, skipped one, worked a half double crochet, or worked a double crochet. Chain one, skip one, work a double crochet. This is the repeat. Chain one, skip one, work a double crochet. Chain one, skip one, work a double crochet. When you get all the way over to your next corner, you're going to work your double crochet, chain one, skip one, and then in the corner, work two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. Then you're going to chain one, skip your first, half double crochet and crochet into the second. And then keep the repeat going all the way around. You will end this round with again, double crochet, chain one, skip one, slip stitch into the top of your starting chain, slip stitch into the top, and then you're going to slip stitch into the uh, double crochet next to it and slip stitch into the chain two space where we will start round three. Okay, here we are at the end of round two. And now I'm going to start round three and this is gonna be our two round repeat for a while. Okay. <clears throat> I have attached, or attached, my goodness. I've slip stitched into the top of my chain three and I've slip stitched into the top of the next double crochet over and I've slip stitched into my chain two space. Now we will chain three and make a double crochet in the chain two space. Now that makes two double crochet. Chain two, two more double crochet. One and two and this round it's, it's going to be very reminiscent of the collar, where we have one round that's solid, double crochets, and one round that's kind of bracketed. So we are going to place a double crochet in the top of every available double crochet, and in every chain one space, just like we did before and this is the entire round, just like this. When you get to your back corner or front corner, you're gonna put your last double crochet and then in the chain two space, you're gonna put two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, and carry on down the way. And the round after that is gonna be your bracket round. Okay, uh, give me just a moment and I'll tell you how many rounds we'll be doing of this before we start our bottom hem. Okay, you're gonna to need to do a total of 19 more rounds. Your last round should be Okay, as I am watching my video, I'm editing it right now, I noticed I gave you the absolute, I started to give you the absolute wrong row count for your entire body of your poncho. Your row count, you should end with row 18. I don't know where I came up with 19 more rounds. That would have been, I think, a total of 21 rounds. That's absolutely wrong. 
Uh, you should have a total of 18 rounds before we're ready to get started like this. This should be your last round. Should be a solid double crochet round. It needs to end on that. And you should have a total of 18 of them um, before we're ready to start on our hem or our border. Now, the half double crochet round that we started off with, that doesn't count. That's that's like round zero, okay? that That's just a foundation round. We're not gonna count that as anything. So, our first round of the body of the poncho, this is our half double crochet round, counts as nothing. This is round one, round two, round three, round four, and on. Total of 18 of these. A total of 18 of this two row repeat. <clears throat> I may have just said something confusing there. Not a total of 18 two rows, a total of 18 individual rows where you end with this row, this uh, solid double crochet row being your 18th row. Then we will start on the border or the hem. I'm so sorry that I began to instruct you wrong on that and I hope that I didn't create any confusion I again I'm I'm still new at doing tutorials I'm still this is a learning curve for me and um, thank you so much for your patience with me uh, I I was just watching my video through and I caught that and I'm like oh my gosh I have to correct that that would have been such a disaster that would have made your ponchos very long um, so 18 and I would dare to guess if you need this to be a little shorter Maybe you're a shorter person or you have a shorter torso Maybe do 16 rounds of this because 16 rounds will still allow you to end at this solid double crochet round um, And then try it on see if it's the length you like and if it is go ahead and move on to the border round um Thank you so much for your patience with me. I do apologize. I'm glad I caught this because I would have felt so bad if my comment section started to fill up with, this is really long, this isn't working out right, or I'm ending in a bracket. I would have felt so bad and so embarrassed. So before I jump off of here, just to reiterate, a total, not counting your half double crochet row, a total row count will be 18 from this first bracket row all the way to your last solid double crochet row thank you and if you want it to be a little longer make 20 rows because at exactly 20 rows and what i mean by 20 is obviously 20 from this being row one two three on to 20 not counting our our half double crochet row make a total of 20 rows and that will give you a bit of a longer poncho it'll be you know It'll be this much longer if you need just a little extra, okay? Okay, when you get, when you make your last <clears throat> solid double crochet round, which should be your 20th round, not counting your first half double crochet round, that doesn't count, that's just sort of a foundational round. We want a total of 20 brackets and solids, brackets and solids, a total of 20 of those. Now we're going to start our border. This isn't, I haven't completed it, so my stitch count won't be correct. So I'm just gonna give you a basic rundown instead of because if I had made the whole thing, what with all the other projects I have going on, it would have taken me too long to end this video and finally get it published for you guys. But I figured, you don't really need me to have it completely completed in order to walk you through how to put the border. So here's how we're going to make the border. And let me show you what the border looks like with my other poncho that I have completed. It is almost like what we did on the neck. Here's the neck. It's almost like that, but we're gonna kind of double it. And if you don't like this doubled look, then do exactly what we did on the neck where you, instead of chaining four, we're gonna chain five here, but you would chain five, skip five, put a single crochet in five, and on your next way around, just fill this up with like five single crochet or six single crochet. It really doesn't have to be precise. So that's only if you want 
a single layer of this, but if you want the double layer, uh, after I show you this, this first round, stay tuned, okay? Here's how we're gonna start our hem. You're gonna slip stitch your way over to the chain two space like we have been doing. Chain one, you know what? I wanna slip stitch my way a little further in because we almost wanna be in the middle of this chain two space. So I'm gonna make that kind of a looser, bigger slip stitch. Chain one, see how I kind of worked my way into the middle? Chain one, well actually, yes, chain one and work a single crochet. Sorry, it is 6 a.m., forgive. <laughs> okay, chain five, one, two, three, four, and five. Skip four, one, two, three, four, and in your fifth, work a single crochet. This is the repeat all the way around. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, work a single in the fifth. When you get to your next corner, this happened to me with both of them that I made. Again, this does not have to be, it, it looks like a complicated and like fancy uh, poncho, but it, we don't have to make it that way. Like we don't have to be complicated. Um, I found that with my first poncho, I had exactly four stitches to skip before my corner, but with my second poncho, I had to fudge it a little bit. So if you have to fudge it, do whatever you have to do to make sure that you have four stitches to skip before your corner. It doesn't matter if you have to jump over an extra stitch or, or come in and to where you only skip three. Doesn't matter, no one's gonna notice. Not a soul on earth is gonna notice. So then you're gonna skip your four, place a single crochet in your corner, chain two space here, chain five and do it all over again. And again, if you come back around the beginning and it ain't working out, it looks like you have five that you have to skip, um, skip them, that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Literally no one's gonna notice, <laughs> okay? Um, oops, no one's gonna notice it. It's easy peasy, no big deal. Crochet is extremely forgiving. We don't have to be super technical all the time. Some patterns you do. Your counts have to be so on point. This one, not really. This one here, it's very relaxed piece of uh, article of clothing that we're making here. Okay, uh, if, if this is where you wanna end it, what I would suggest is whenever you slip stitch into this, just work like five single crochet, or if you want it to be really bulky and really stick out far like that, work six single crochet in every single loop all the way around and call it cheddar, call it done. Um, but if you want the double, like I showed you here, let me show you one more time. If you want this doubled look, stay tuned for the next round, okay? Okay, I am now at the end of my round. I'm gonna do the double border. Um, something, I'll show you what I had to do, but I had to do this because my stitch count is off because as you can see, I'm only about four or five rows in on the body of this poncho. But what, what you might want run into is that you have five or six or whatever, five um, uh, stitches to skip. So you know what I did? Just to keep it from kind of buckling in on itself, I did chain six instead of chain five. So just, like I said, do whatever you have to do, fudge it a little to make it fit. But look, who on earth is gonna notice that this is five chains and this is six? Absolutely no one. Um, okay, here is how we're gonna end the round. If you, if you want to just have the single round, go ahead and do your chains. I'm gonna chain six again because I, I Again, I have a lot to skip here at the end. One, two, three, four, five, six for me. Maybe six for you, maybe only three for you. I don't know. And I'm gonna slip stitch into the first single crochet. And what I would do from here 
if you just want the single round, is slip stitch into your chain five space, just like we did around the neck. Chain one and go ahead and put like, let's, let's start with five. One, two, three. We're just trying to get creative here, you know? Four and five. And that seems to work. Let's see what happens if we do six. It might make it a little bulkier and, and may, might make it stick out just a little more. I mean, I think six might work. Oh, next, next group over, doing nothing with a single crochet. One, two, three, four, five. That's how it looks with five. Let's let's try six again. This is sort of a, you know, pick your whatever you want to do. You can you don't always have to follow a pattern specifically the way the pattern is written. You can do whatever you want. I kind of like it with six. I feel like it really makes it, um, it because it crams the area a little bit. It really makes it kind of stand out. I kind of like it with six. That's just me personally. You do whatever you want. But that's what I would do if you're done at this point and you only want one, one layer of these of these loops. If you want to go with the two, you're going to end with um, if you if your math your math if your count worked out perfect for you, then you're just going to chain three, and you're going to double crochet into your. Um, starting single crochet like that. For me, the chain count didn't work out so well because, well, I'm only a few rows in. It's not right. <clears throat> so I'm going to chain four, and maybe you'll need to chain four as well to keep to keep it from kind of buckling in. It's okay. Uh, then double crochet, just like so, like that. Now. We are going to, the reason why we did this is because we want it to be a little more centered. You know, we didn't want to end here on the point, we want to end right here. So now you want to chain one, single crochet, and chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Jump over here and do a single crochet in that chain five loop. And this is the repeat all the way around. One, two, three, four, five, single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, single crochet. All the way around, just like so. And we don't have to worry about fudging anything because it's gonna work out. Even for me, it's gonna work out. But you can see we have that sort of honeycombed look right there. So just keep doing this all the way around. When you get to your point, just single crochet in your last loop, chain five, jump over the top of the point, single crochet right there, and carry on down until uh, I'll meet me at the beginning, right here. Okay, I have completed the second round of chain fives to create this sort of honeycombing type of effect. I figured I'd finish the last round with you. I've just chained five. Now I'm gonna slip stitch into my starting single crochet. I'm gonna immediately slip stitch into the next chain five space, and I'm gonna start working five single crochet in every chain five space all the way around. This is the repeat. There's nothing special that you have to do on the corners, just if there is a chain five space, put five single crochet in it. You're gonna do this all the way around and with a slip stitch into your first single crochet right here. Fasten off, weave in your tails, you're done, you have a beautiful poncho. Uh, when you're done with your working your five single crochet, by the way, we do nothing again. We do nothing with this single crochet. You just immediately jump over to the next chain five space. One, two, three, four and five, one, two, three, four and five. And this is what your work 
will look like in the end. Just like that. Okay? If you have any questions, please leave a comment. I'll do my best to answer anything. Um, if you have any requests, uh, please leave me a comment and I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I have. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for putting up with my hecticness. Um, I am new with this. I'm completely new with this. And I assure you that much like anybody else on this platform, as I go, I'm pretty sure I'll get more polished, more put together. And, but I'm never gonna stop being me. I'm probably always gonna be a little bit of a scatterbrain, but I think I'm gonna be a little more of an organized scatterbrain. Um, so thank you for putting up with me. Thank you for being here from the beginning with me. And we'll see where we go next. Bye.